Hello, my name is Max Devine, and my latest Cameron Hill Press book is Spirits of the Ice Pirate. It's about the Viking incursions into Canada, namely Newfoundland at around 1000 Common Era. It's my version of, of what happened. It's fiction. It's not, it's not based on fact. I don't think much of the sagas are based on fact, so I took quite a few liberties there. But it's, it's got some fun fantasy elements, and I take a bit of creative license. So it's not just bland history. It's, it's action, it's adventure, and it's fun. I did so much research. <laughs> I did about two years worth of research, learning languages, learning about cultures, learning about customs, learning about technologies, ignoring some of what I learned because sometimes making your own choices is just more interesting as long as they're realistic. But it was, it was a mountain of research. The title, to me, it sounded really cool. <laughs> it's actually, it was actually an episode of a, a Walking with Dinosaurs, which I forgot was the name of that episode, but I've since obviously rediscovered that. But Spirits um, ties in nicely with the Native American culture that's represented in the book, the extinct Beothak culture. And even though it wasn't frozen all the time, especially in the times of those days, the world was warmer. There was just something very evocative about it being a frozen forest. And I set most of the important, uh, most of the important parts of the book during the winter time, just so that we could have that frozen forest aesthetic. Character names came either from the sagas, the the Viking names are all taken from the sagas. So uh, I didn't make those up. So I'm sorry that they're so similar. Everyone who's criticized how similar the names are, but I can't help it if Vikings named their sons Thor or uh, uh, out of habit. So, um, there's not much I could do about that, but there's been a few criticisms of that, but you know, you'll come up with creative ways to remember who's who. And the Native American names, well, Beothak is a dead language, but there are wonderful people out there who are working on reviving it or at least preserving it in written form. So there were resources available to me to name my characters after various animals and words that have been recorded of the Beothak culture. So it's all authentic Beothak language. I studied acting for three years at the Melbourne Actors Lab. So character is big for me and getting into character is big for me. I enjoy working with my hands and I like getting dirty and I like, I like trying to experience life as they would have, you know, um, stopping short of chipping my own flint tomahawks and then cutting down a tree or hunting my own deer. Getting to know that and getting to know how it feels to do that and how, to, how it feels to sleep rough out in the cold, I think these are important things. Like Laurence Olivier said, walk in your character's shoes. You don't, it's not figurative. You actually put your character's shoes on and walk in them. Get to know them. I don't go, I don't read blogs. I don't go to websites for authors. I assume there are some great ones out there though. And if that's what you're into, then go and do that. I don't participate in writing challenges. I don't want to be restricted in how long I have to work on something because I like to get it right. And, you know, when you talk about great literature, there's no, nobody talks about how long it took Dante, that it took him 20 years to write The Divine Comedy, or that it took Milton 15 years to write Paradise Lost. No one cares because what they produced is timeless. So I don't agree with putting deadlines on books. I think that you should work on them for as long as you need to work on them to get them right. And writing challenges, and again, it's just a restriction that I don't want. I'm restricted enough by not going full fantasy and inventing my own worlds. I like to set everything in the real world. So 
Yeah, I don't want any more more restrictions. I don't want word limits. I don't like them. Read history because there's so much out there that hasn't been addressed. And, you know, you don't have to write historical fiction if you're taking your inspiration from history. Look at look, look what George R. R. Martin did when he read about the War of the Roses. Or, you know, uh, Star Wars is very similar to the American Revolution in a lot of ways, and then, then you know, a bunch of farmers and ragtag rebels who took on an empire. It's all in history. It's all there. Uh, but always go where the drama is. That's all it is. What, what, what's the worst day in this person's life? Come up with a character and tell me what's the worst thing that could happen to me. I don't deal with book reviews. I read them. I enjoy them. I think the negative ones are probably more useful than the positive ones. Uh, you can learn from them. The positive ones feel good, but you don't learn anything. So. There's, there's nothing to deal with, really. Spirit animal, that's that's an interesting one. Um, Australia, in Australia, I'm Australian, and our Indigenous people are called spirit animals to people, and this is done in quite a few Native American and Canadian tribes as well. Uh, the spirit animal is a is a high honour that has to be earned. And not having been awarded that honor by any such tribe, I wouldn't venture to say I have a spirit animal. Uh, there are animals I like. I like sharks. I've seen a few. I like being out on the water. There's something about their power that's exciting, but they're not a spirit animal. I don't have a totem. I haven't, I haven't done anything to earn that.